Hold on, y'all. Welcome to your prayer and fasting dojo. Mm -mm. I can hear that. Y'all hold it for a second. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum. Once again, prayer and fasting, the foundation to success is at your doorstep. We're about to launch. We have a beautiful program that you all should uh, tune in. If you can't watch it now, watch it later. But whatever you get from us is coming from the heart. It's coming from our mind that's connected to Allah. And if it's anything that's off-centered, it's something that we did, not what Allah did. I want you to understand that. But get the best out of it and take some of what you get from here and save your lives. Because that's all this is about. It's about saving our lives. We're just dying too soon. And we're dying uh, in, in a, a, a alarming number. And we have to do something to halt the death toll amongst Black people here in the hells of North America. But without further ado, we got Brother Abdul Latif Adam, who gave out 32 or 3,600 flyers in Ghana, Africa for prayer and fasting. Give him a warm round of applause. Wow. 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 He's a sharp shooter. And I saw it and I got some tape and I'll try to get some in today so that y'all can see what he's doing. So uh, without further ado, uh, Sister Lisa AX, you may proceed. Attention prayer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmadeen Iyaka Nobudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ekdena Sarutum Mustaqeen Al-Surata Latina Anno Amta Alayhim where is my dubia lay him? Walla do li. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Salutations, prayer and fasting family. Meet your administrative team. These are the people working behind the scenes to ensure that the presentation runs as smoothly as possible. If you're contacted by someone on the admin team, we are trying to collect and store your contact information properly. Please answer the call. In addition, and whenever necessary, Zoom participants may be muted or placed in the waiting room. In that case, feel free to continue watching the presentation on our Facebook page as we will be streaming this event live. In addition to our Facebook page, we also have a Twitter page, a YouTube page, an Instagram page, and a TikTok page. Our effort is to ensure that we reach as many of our people as possible to share with them these two powerful and life-changing tools, prayer and fasting. Won't you help us get the word out? Great. Take a picture or a screen capture. Share them. And be sure to join us on each of our social media platforms. Thank you. Now, 
Enjoy the presentation. Praying and fasting, the foundation to success. Presents. Would you like to become a better fisher of men? Learn from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's top fisherman. You about the best fisherman I've ever met. Six one zero seven two six three zero two seven. Code four two nine eight seven eight. Allah Wakeba. Allah Wakeba. Praise be to Allah. We want to welcome everyone for coming out tonight again. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam, ma'am. In the name, in the name of Allah, who came nine thousand miles to save each one of us. His name is Master Father Muhammad, and the most holy name of the one he raised up, Georgia-born black man with a fourth grade education, who went by the name or goes by the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is today alive and full power on the wheel, known as the living exalted Christ and the Mahdi, and in the name of our Comforter. The spirit of truth has come to guide us into all truth. The people's champion, our friend, our leader, and our guide, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, is in their holy righteous name. I would like to greet you one more time. Because if you never say peace and blessings to our people enough, it's the shortest prayer. Assalamu alaikum. It's such an honor and a privilege and a joy to be with you all tonight. We thank you all for coming out tonight. We hope that you will enjoy the program. You know, the mathematics of raising the dead, as it says in the Holy Quran. Allah says to us, he would raise us degree by degree. So how does that happen? Brother Dumont, we'll get into that. Just want to give you a little bit of background about him, how it happened for him. You know, it, I'm sure most of you have heard how um, it, the saying of water rises up in the five minutes that you can hardly detect it. And it is the sunlight that purifies the dirt from the water. It can be the dirtiest of the water that's from the earth. And yet the sunlight, the purity, the, the radiant sun, the beaming fire from the sun takes that water and cleans it up. So what is the sun that today? The sun that the moon is today is the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan, the light, that, the radiant light that he used to burn out the dirt in us, to clean us up from the filth of this lifetime, is the teachings of the Most Honorable Lodge Mama. Well, he did that when he reached into the belly of the beast, into the brain of the black man called Brother Abdul Malik Muhammad over here. And he began to raise him up over 15 years. He raised him up degree by degree, cleaning him up from the, the dope dealer, from being the you know, the, <laughs> the gang banging, the one who will rob you with no limited time, with not even a thought, with no guilt. He began to clean him up from that type of thinking with the sun of truth. 
the light of, of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teachings. And as he did that, Brother Abdul Malik, out of his gratitude, wanted to show love for Minister Farrakhan for cleaning him up, making him a better person. So he began to fish people in right there where he was at in Billy the Beast for 15 years. And on this side, when he got out, he continued that. We've been running that race for 17 years, almost 18 years strong. And he'll correct me if my, my math is a little bit off. I did go to public school, by the way, if my math is off, so don't blame it on me. Um, but anyway, we know that water represents the moral of the people. So he began to clean him up morally. So Brother Abdul Malik said, I got I, the minister, he did pop me upside the head, back of the head, and said, 2019, I was slipping, you know, that I was a fake Muslim. He's talking to all of us, but you know, he, he took it personal. He said, let me, let me get back on my post. Let me look at the light one more time, who still is shining bright, not just here in America, but across the whole world. Known as Alba Mr. Louis Farrakhan, let, let me go ahead and push him out in the street one more time. Let me get my people who are destroyed because they're not looking at the light. They don't understand the light. Let me show them how much he loved me by bringing them to the teachers of the Muslim Elijah Muhammad. And he began to do that. And COVID hit. He said, you know what? COVID don't mean nothing. My minister still loved me when I was in my worst condition. So I got to keep going. And he ended up making a platform, not knowing what Zoom was. He ended up making a platform for all of us to be able to come here to get uh, the album as the little Farrakhan words uh, as a sunlight, as the brightest ray we have today on prayer and fasting and foundation to success. And we want to just highlight a few people who are now standing in the sun, bathing in the sun with Brother Abdul Malik, with their testimony, what prayer and fast is done for them as ministers begin to burn out them with the mathematics of prayer and fasting. It's two. He didn't say one. He says two things that the, the Satan cannot defeat. One plus one, prayer and fasting. So Sister Ali, are you here, beautiful sister? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> well, alaikum salam, beautiful sister. Would you please come forth and give you a testimony? Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, no, no, no. the one God who came in the person of Master Prophet Muhammad, I thank him for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the exalted Christ. I thank them both. I can't thank them both enough for leaving an eye miss, the honorable minister Farrakhan, the Messiah, the Jesus. We love him so much and thank a lot for him. Um, greet my family again in the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I've been fasting now for 100 and this is my 105th week. Allah Allah Allah. Um, Allah Allah. Allah. I've been fasting like 72 hours a week and um, I pray, you know, over five times a day. And uh, it's such a blessing. I came in to pray and fast and through Sister Sunia. She invited me in and she was telling me at that time that the brother was selling homes. And so I didn't know what I was coming into. And she said the brother was, had homes for $1,500. I said, ooh, that sounds good. I need a house. And so I came in and listened. And I haven't left since. And it's been a blessing. And um, I thank a lot for this. So we were able to purchase those homes. And I was you know, fortunate enough to get you know, one of them. Hopefully, you know, but yeah, we purchased those and we're really doing good things and we're helping people all over the world, you know, in Ghana, Jamaica. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so praying fast has been a blessing for me. And uh, I thank a lot for Brother Adu Malik. I thank a lot for the Honorable Ms. Farrakhan and Master Farah Muhammad and Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because yes. the Honorable Ms. Farrakhan saved my life because when I came in, when I first came into the mosque, I heard him and I stood up right away because I was just lost, you know, so I think, thank a lot for that, that lesson that I heard from him and it, it just woke me up. But then, you know, along the way, you know, you kind of, you know, you lose, I don't know what you do, you just lose everything, it seemed like, but I, I was real disciplined in the beginning, but then I just lost, you know, I lost my discipline. And so I discovered prayer and fasting, it's been a blessing for me. And I thank a lot for this. And so the, the family on here is so beautiful, so supportive, and uh, just love everybody. Everybody's just so warm and just helpful, you know. And so I, you know, I think I've come a long ways because I used to couldn't really say anything too much and I get all nervous. And so I'm, I think I'm coming out of that a little bit now. Thank a lot for that. But anyway, um, I just want to, you know, thank everyone. And it's a blessing. So, you know, prayers is a, um, a lot wouldn't care for us to work for our prayer, so I want to have that connection with that a lot within. And it's a and also fast is a prescription. So I have to, you know, take my prescription 72 hours a week so I can stay well. So it's healing me and I and I thank a lot for the 
to being blessed. And I thank the family for, you know, the encouragement and everything. So it's just been a blessing. So thank you all. Assalamu alaikum. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Sister Ali is such a beautiful sister. Beautiful, beautiful sister. We thank you for that awesome testimony. Yes, ma'am. Praise be to We have one more. Let me, let me ask her. Let me ask her a question. Sister Ali. <laughs> yes, sir. How long have you been praying and fasting? 105 weeks now. 105 weeks. Oh, let me ask you. Oh, 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 hold on. Let me spotlight. Let me spotlight her right quick. Mm -hmm. I had a question for you. How long have you been a believer? I've been in the nation 40 years. 40 years? Yes, sir. Wow. You ever had, well, you ever had the have you ever had the privilege to meet the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? I met him, you know, in directly, but I met him, you know, um, I had to ask him a question. He came to a believers meeting at the Mosque 27. And mm -hmm. um, I had I wanted to ask him a question. My son was going to Marcus Garvey at the time, and he, you know, he was Qaddafi. <laughs> so his last name was Aguilar, but he started writing Muhammad. He was going to school with Brother Halima's uh, sons. And they were Muhammad, so he wanted to be Muhammad too. So he would write Muhammad. And uh, so, you know, at that time, the minister, we can't just take names. And so I went up to him and asked that question, you know, about my son taking a name. And he said, well, he is Muhammad. <laughs> he said he is Muhammad. And he said, you can't be Muhammad if the family is not Muhammad. So he gave us all Muhammad that, that same, I think it was on a Saturday. And he gave oh, the family oh, Muhammad. Wow, <laughs> so oh, oh, my God. God. So I, oh, I met him like that, you know, and I, you know, I, talk, I spoke to him like that, you know. And he was at the mosque in person, and I used to shake his hand. Yeah. He used to come to banquets and everything, you know, and so we used to shake his hand. So, you know, so I kind of met him like that, you know, so I don't know if he would know me. That's, <laughs> but, that's, that's, that's better than meeting him. <laughs> yes. He can give y'all a new name, the whole family. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that, that's a yes, great sir. meet. There was you know, and, and so I understand it. I understand it. Yeah. So you've been in here for 40 years. Do you know how many weeks that is? Oh, that's 2,080 weeks Ooh. of being in, being in the process. My God. 2,080 weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you've been praying and fasting for 105 weeks? Yes, sir. 105 weeks out of the 2,000 and blah, blah weeks. It's, it takes us down to 1,975 out of the 105. Now, yes. in the 105 weeks that you've been praying and fasting, which is preserving your stomach, because the messenger said our stomachs are built to live for a thousand years. We know something is wrong if we die at 60, yes, 70. Something is drastically wrong. Mathematics, Islam, and Islam is mathematics. Yes, sir. This belly is supposed to live for a thousand years. You've been doing this for 105 weeks. Do you know how many years you've added on to your life for doing that, sister? I hope 80 more, because that's going to be that. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> that long way, to me. Oh, oh, way by, <laughs> you know, see, this is the, see, the messenger is giving it to us, yes, and we just have, it's hard to catch what the messenger is giving to us when we won't come off the cross. Many of us on, when you pin to a cross, can you catch a football? No, sir. How can you no, catch, a, catch a football when your hands is pinned to the cross? On your fly. <laughs> can you kick? Can you kick with your feet pinned to the cross? No, sir. This sister here is a, a, the quintessential example for those who are 
elders in the mosque. Death ain't for y'all. All you got to do is get down like Sister Ali is getting down. And you will put more years on your life. And your stomach won't wear out because we wearing it out. Yes, because we won't back up from that table. But this sister, guided by Allah, who came to curse the master of Muhammad, has her fasting every week. Boy, when I grow up, I want to be just like you, Sister Alpha. <laughs> I'm already standing on your shoulders because you was here way before I got here. Yes, and sir. I'm can't... trying to be like you. Yes, Come sir. on, man. This is my girl. <laughs> you know what? Give her a warm round of applause. I just wanted y'all to see this. Hello, Akbar. 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 Hello, Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Brett, are you here, sir? Could you please unmute um, yourself? There you yes, are. Yes, ma'am. I'm still here. All right. Thank you. Alaikum, brothers and sisters. Alaikum, salam, sir. In the name of Allah, Allah the beneficent, the merciful. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the one who brought and brought to us Master Fadid Muhammad, I give all honor, glory, and praise unto our Lord and Savior, our Creator, Allah. Um, let me see. This is my hundred. Uh, first off, brothers and sisters, this is my hundred and twenty-fourth week fasting. Hello. Um, oh, oh yeah, man. <laughs> I just came off of a. Uh, I was on a seven-day fast, which was interesting because it was weird because I didn't even have. I didn't. I was hungry. I didn't know what to do. All I did was drink water, coffee, and tea. That was it. Um, oh, wow, wow. I used to weigh. Ooh. I think when I met, I think in actuality, I think when I met Abdul, brother Abdul, I was still a little over 400 pounds. Wow. And um, yeah, that was, that was a long time ago. That was a couple of years. And um, he told me that one day he told me I needed to get, come to prayer and fasting. And I looked at him I'm like, what is he talking about? What is prayer and fasting? So he gave me, he told me to download his own app. He gave me the information. And then as I was listening in the Zoom call, I was told what I needed to do. And that was from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, not to eat. So once I started doing that, it was hard at first. I'm not gonna lie, it was hard. But I think maybe like a month and a half or two after I actually did start praying and fasting, I was actually able to fast three days without being phased any so being on zoom call listening to the brothers and sisters talking about they've done seven day fast 14 day fast 21 day fast and everything i'm like you know what i think i can do a seven day fast and it wasn't actually even about me thinking that i could do it i knew i could do it i just wanted to see if i could do it and i pulled off the seven day fast no problem so now i know this is the end of our fasting day today but I'm almost certain tomorrow I'm going to strive to do a 14-day fast. And oh, once, yeah, I, like, once I hit that 14-day fast, I'm going to go and I'm going to do a 21-day fast. I want to see exactly how much weight that I can lose. Um, like I said, I was over 400 pounds when I met Abdul. After I actually got on and started doing a steady prayer and fast, I went from that 400 down to 360 I went from that 300 down to 280. I went from that 200 down, that 280 down to 224. I had the doctor's appointment two weeks ago. I'm at 202 pounds. La Wakbar. I, I haven't oh, seen oh, 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 ever been oh, 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 that oh, 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 You lost oh, two oh, oh, people, oh, man. You oh, lost oh, two whole oh, people. Oh, oh, oh. I, I did. I lost two people. And my doctor, she was looking at me. She was like, Brett, what are you doing? I told her, I'm like, I'm praying and I'm fasting. Nothing. I said, I'm not trying that. I don't eat fried food anymore. That doesn't even bother me. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fried food person. I don't eat pork. I hardly, I don't honestly even eat red meat. If it's not chicken or fish, <laughs> I don't even need it. But as of late, I've been eating more so more vegetables than anything. Green beans, corn, Brussels sprouts, and, I, and Brussels sprouts, and, and all serious, my grandmother told me a long time ago, that ain't number baby cabbage. So, <laughs> so I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to extend my life as long as possible. 
if I can get to 100 years, guess what? I'm going to live that 100 years. But please believe with it, when I'm, while I'm working to get to, from, to that 100 years, I'm going to be sure that I have a message and a testimony for each and every single person I come across. Come on, Black man. That's awesome. And, it, and I can honestly prayer. say this. If it wasn't for Allah bringing God, bringing that man right there, Abdul Malik Muhammad, if it wasn't for God bringing that man into my life one day, I don't know where I would be. I'd probably still be in a homeless shelter, looking crazy mm -hmm. and stupid. But I got tired. I got to, I, I was tired. I, I had been homeless five years. I was homeless three years, got locked up in prison for a year and, and some change, got out and guess what? I was still homeless another two years and I got tired. I started praying. And I talked to God the night before I, because I was going to the Archdiocese of Chicago, which was interesting. But I prayed that night. I got up and I prayed that morning. Then I, I went and showered and put my clothes on. And I went back over by Pacific Garden Mission. That's where I met Brother Abdul Malik Muhammad. And he asked me some questions. And I looked at him like he was crazy. And he told me, this was so weird to me. Because this is the first day I honestly, I can honestly ever say I heard God's voice clearly, like we're talking right now. Mm. He said, if you, and this is what Abdul said, Abdul said, if you come with me today, brother, I guarantee you, you won't have to be wor worried about being homeless ever again. And I looked at him, I'm like, I don't know. So I said, give me a few minutes. And I stepped off to the side and I prayed. I had to pray. Because I at that point in time, I didn't know what to do. So I stepped off to the side and I prayed. And I asked God, I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I'm like, do I trust this man? Do I go with this man? Is this man a serial killer? And it was so weird. The voice in both of my ears, stereo, said, go with him. Trust me and go with him. I'm like, Okay. And I ended my prayer and I went back to Abdul. I said, you know what, sir? I'm like, I'm gonna go with you. And that was my last day, honestly, ever being homeless. In November of 2019, up until this oh, very day, I have not oh, been Law walk by. Law walk by. Great testimony. Law walk by. To Allah. Law walk by. Praise be to Allah. Brother Abdul, like you're on mute. Brother Britt. Oh, praise so, be so. Give him a warm round of applause, Brother Brick Rex Sosa. His testimony is so compelling. You know, it, it's epic. But it's got more stuff. Britt, Sir. me and you used to have seizures like every two days. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, Jesus. Yes, sir. Do you remember when we went to Detroit, Michigan to uh, help promote Savior's Day? I think it was 2020. Yep, I do. 2020. Sir. It was 2020. Yes, sir. And we were helping uh, promote Savior's Day. We all were there. Tell them what happened to you when we were in the mosque. <sighs> Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, I had a seizure. And um, my seizures aren't, they're bad, but when I would come out of them, I'd still know who I am and where I am. But it's just the fact that I kept having them. They were so repetitive. Like he said, I'm having seizures today. If I, were if I was still having seizures like that, I'd probably have a seizure right now, go into it 20, 30 minutes later, come out of it. But even though I still know where I am, it would, it would, it would, I, it would take me a while to continue to try to readjust. But I can honestly say, since I've been doing prayer and fasting, it's been a while since I've had a seizure. I used to work, I, I used to work for Brother Opio. I used to work for Brother Opio. And um, unfortunately, I couldn't continue to work for him because I had a seizure while we were out on a job one day. Mm. Now, I didn't specify to O that I was epileptic. But once I had that seizure, oh, couldn't allow me to work for him anymore because had we been anywhere near water and I'd have had a seizure and rolled in that water, I would have drowned because I can't swim. <laughs> it's not meant for me to swim. So like, I can't swim. But 
O still has my back. If I need anything, I walk past his house basically every day. If I happen to see O, we'll have a conversation. We'll talk 20, 30, 40 minutes. But since I've been fasting and praying, I haven't had a seizure in like almost a year. Don Lakin, let me ask you something. Sir. You went from 400 pounds to 200 pounds. And when I first got with you, you was having a seizure. You had went a long time without having a seizure. How long did you go when you started praying and fasting? You went a, a long time. How long was that? I made it all the way down. About a year, I think. Before about I was, a year. Yeah, about a when year. When I tell you, now let me tell y'all something. When I tell you this man was having seizures every every time I look up, I was getting the call. Britta has a seizure, do 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 do, because they live in one of my houses. Man, didn't he just have a seizure on Monday? It's Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was like routine. But when he started praying and fasting. And he started dropping all those illegal aliens that will kill you. Mm -hmm. If you get that little spark of COVID will catch fire with all of this weight that is not you yeah. and will use it to burn you to the ground. When he stopped doing that, I stopped getting calls about him having seizures. I don't even remember the last time they called me and said he had a seizure. This brother here is working hard. He's FOI, he's a registered Muslim. He, he graduated in 2020 amongst a slew of other believers that we had coming out of Chicago that, that graduated. Yes, and uh, he's still on deck. He'll be uh, on the mission to ATL with us, inshallah. So uh, let's give this brother a warm round of applause, man. He needs, he deserves it. Brent, how long were you homeless? <laughs> a little over five years. Now listen to that. Did y'all just hear this? Yes, sir. Like 60, yes, sir. 60, like 63 months yeah. to be exact. A little over five years being homeless. And then one of the students of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan went down there doing what? Fiction, as we have been instructed to do. And I ran into this brother and a whole busload full of brothers got on. And I was just running up to brothers and this brother here was one of the brothers that got on. And at the end, when we go to the mosque, and they said that I asked them, how many of y'all want to go back to the shelter and how many of y'all want to don't never want to go back? He was one of the brothers who said he didn't want to go back. And this was how many years ago? So going all what almost, almost a little over two. Years. Almost two and a half years. Two years, because it was in 2019, mm -hmm. December. And he ain't been back to the shelter since. This is what Master Farad Muhammad desires for us to do is to push this hard line and make it work. Did I know him? No, I didn't know him. Nope. I didn't know anything about him. It was not relevant. What I wanted to know is if he could take the first step and let Allah take two. Mm. And that's what he did. He took the first step. And it, and it was a bunch of them in the house. They all was in the house. I got a bunch of them because a whole lot of them didn't want to go. They was, they was in the house like Mexicans. You hear me? They were packed up in that boy. I said, yeah, that's right. This would be the Mexicans you can do it, you can do it too. And they and they didn't even know each other, the uh -huh. brothers. But they got to know each other and they became best of friends. You see what the what what these teachings, the life-giving teachings does for us as a people? And you question what we do. This is an example of what the minister been doing all over the world. We could do it too. If you had digest the peel of how to eat to live and the prayer book of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, basically the five principles of Islam. If you incorporate that in your life, then it'll make you another man. The, mat, the white man made you one type of man. He ain't the same man. His name was Brett Johnson. His name is Brett X now. He gave John. Son, 
his name back. That was John's son right there. He walked off the plantation as John's son. <laughs> Broke up in two words as John's son. son. And he gave it back. And now he's great X. Give him a warm round of applause. The man lost to oh, him. Oh, Ekbar. Oh, Ekbar. That's awesome. Oh, Give it up for the black man. Oh, oh praise be to Allah. Love, Ekbar. Come on with Thank it, you, man. Sister Thank you. Welcome to your prayer and fasting dojo. Our topic continues. Keeping the Body Hydrated, Part 3. Let's recap. We've observed how hydration plays an intricate role in the electric force field and your body's autoimmune system. In addition, hydration is essential for rapid transport of fresh oxygen and perishable nutrients. Equally important is quick waste elimination. Let's unpack that, observing how food, nutrients, and waste have to travel. The small intestine is 17 feet of narrow canal with nooks and tight corners. And the last loop of the journey is an additional five feet of the large intestines, better known as the colon. That's 22 feet. Here's our new friend, the circulatory system. I like to call it the high-speed transport. It consists of your veins, capillaries, arteries, and lymphatic vessels. As a side note, the lymphatic vessels are the blood's waste system. They're the smallest vessels and wrongly ignored until there's a life crisis like a disease or chronic ailment. When you lay the blood vessels out end to end, like a highway on a map, it adds up to 60,000 miles. I'm not kidding, 60,000 miles. Yes, sir, you want to know how this information will benefit you. Stick with me. We'll take a real life scenario and use it in a practical application. I want you to take notice of a few things. One, this is not a meal or hardly a small snack. Two, notice the water pressure and the amount of water it takes to move this pulp just a few inches. And three, the sticky residue that's left behind. Think for a moment. Imagine how much water do you drink on the daily? And if the foods you consume, are they sticky in the bowl, yummy, gooey, and chewy? And do they absorb water in the pot? I know, you cook a pot of greens every weekend, or you have a salad twice a week. That's a good thing. Again, I want you to imagine the toxic buildup that occurs over decades, clogging both vessels, the bloodline and the digestive tract. Believe it or not, we have one remaining lesson on the topic of hydration. With great care, I've approached the subject from various angles to stress the importance of water to our vitality. The Quran teaches that Allah brought water down from heaven and made it a part of every living thing. No wonder the Bible refers to it as living waters. That being so, I leave you with one question. Where's your water bottle? Prayer and Fasting, the foundation to success, is founded and hosted by your brother and servant, Abdul Malik Muhammad. Welcome to your...
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Awesome. Thank you, Sister Rainey, for that wonderful, wonderful commercial. Thank you, Sister Lisa, for helping us with that. Um, we have a few. Let Lisa, let Lisa go. Assalamualaikum, Prayer Bastion family. Assalamualaikum. Uh, praise is due to Allah. I have the, the awesome opportunity to give thanks to Almighty God Allah for his intervention in the affair of my life through uh, Brother Abdul Malik and my beautiful prayer and fasting family. Um, one of the greatest joys that I have now is this prayer and fasting family. We really and truly are a family. We love on each other. We frustrate each other, just like a family does, but we pray together, so we stay together. And um, I can't thank Allah enough for all of my prayer and fasting family that have supported me as I'm making my transition through my life, trying to find my way back to Allah. Um, I joined prayer and fasting 78 weeks ago now, and um, Allah, yep, Allah, I'm the baby tonight though, 78 weeks and I'm the baby of tonight, but when I joined I was 182 pounds and I thought I was fine, but I was not, <laughs> I am now 130 pounds, but the weight um, is just a, a bonus for the connection that I've made to Allah through the, the praying, the fasting, the studying. I'm just grateful. I know that this is a lifestyle change for me. And as they've said, it's not easy initially, but over time, it just becomes a part of your life and you move to other levels of difficulty. But as you continue to stay with praying and fasting and you start challenging some of those other demons that come up in you, the prayer and the fasting and this family being so supportive, you just continue to watch yourself move from, from level to level, as he says, from um, phase to phase, he nurtures us onto our perfection. So these two tools, prayer and fasting, they are truly the foundation for your success and making our, our way back. So um, Master Farad Muhammad promised us friends in all walk of life. We have friends in all walk of life on this prayer and fasting, you will find your way, you will find your person that will help you to make it through this. So come and join us. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Hold on, leave her on for a minute. Let me ask her a couple of questions. <laughs> okay, leave her on. What happened, Sister Lisa? Okay. There she is, shining star. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum salam, favorite mentor. Oh, praises be to Allah. I have a couple questions for you. Did you, did, did we purchase property? Yes, we did. We did? Okay, good. Um, how, much, how much money did we raise in one month? Nearly two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, praises be to Allah! Now, get it. Do y'all need a warm oh, round of applause? Yeah, absolutely. Love walk bar. Yeah, like that. Oh, what you talking about? Now, let me ask you another question. Did we invest in properties? Yes, we did. How much property did we get as a collective running as a unified front like the messenger has taught us to do? How much how much property worth did we get after so, we I think it was around 3.5 million dollars worth of property or more? I can't remember. Yeah, it was like it was something like that's the bottom. That's the bottom. That's the bottom. That's the that's the that's the bottom of the burrow. That's if, everything goes, that's, a, that's if everything go bad, we run out with that. Yes, sir. That's what it is. But we were somewhere around 5.9, but that's okay. Yeah, 5.9, that's what it was. Now, let me ask you something. Did we go and represent and lead the march for the Huron Valley situation? Absolutely. Yes, we did. 
So tell us a little bit about that because that was the first time I ever met you physically. That's true. Um, and it was a blessing. I'm so grateful to have met you and to meet the sisters that we went to support. We actually were challenged by some sisters who have been boots on the ground on the issue of the treatment of black women who are imprisoned, rightfully or unjustfully. And um, they challenged us to come off the Zoom and get on the street and support them. And I think within one weekend, you had put together a whole, what, almost a hundred people showed up um, through mm -hmm. the efforts of prayer and fasting, myself included, and um, FOI from all over the state and out of the state, you and brothers from Chicago came and we took to the streets and we ended up in the final call newspaper um, to promote the uh, spotlight on these sisters who are being mistreated here in Michigan. So yes, sir, we've done some good work with that. Praise be to Is brother Saladin 7X here? I think so. Yes, sir. All praises due to Allah. Sir. All praises be to Allah. I want to pull him in. Oh, there goes my um, brother. Saladin, brother Saladin, uh, tell us about the 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 efforts and what we did with Dominican Republic and, and how did you put that together? Yes, sir, all praise is due to law in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful um, family, brother Saladin 7X. And before I just get in that real quick, I have been fasting um, with this under the leadership of Abdul Malik for 79 weeks. And I, I was a brother who suffered for diabetes real bad for over 30 years and tried everything in the world to cure it. And nothing seems to work until Allah allowed me to meet the Good Samaritan who taught me the technique of combining prayer and fasting will, kill, will cure all illness. And when I started that process, Within four to five weeks, my numbers started getting better. Within 12 or close to 15 weeks, it was stabilized. And even the doctor said it was a miracle. And I told the doctor, yes, you're right. But the miracle did not come from the medicine you gave me. The miracle came from praying and fasting, which I found in this um, platform. Oh, so, Allah. yes, man, all praise is due Wait, to Allah. Uh, so real quick, family. Um, on this platform, we have everything from Christians, Muslims, Sunni, um, Pan-Africanists, Hebrew, Islam, and everybody. You heard the testimonies from the people that went before me, the success that you can have with praying and fasting. And right now, the entire Muslim world, billions of people in the Muslim world is celebrating a sacred um, holiday. And this holiday consists of sacrificing the sacred animal in the name of your Lord, giving thanks. But because of this platform under the leadership of Abdul Malik, we, we learned that the real animal that needs to be sacrificed is within ourselves. And the draining of the blood of that animal is draining your impurities, your sickness, you know, the things that you been fighting to overcome, but been bringing you down. Once you drain these things, it purifies the heart. And then, they, then you can represent that purity by your good character. So mm -hmm. this family has been doing a lot of great work in the community. You heard about Jamaica, you heard about Ghana, but we just recently came back from the Dominican public. And we went out there and we donated supplies. We gave out information about praying and fasting so we can take it to our brothers and sisters in the Dominican public because we don't discriminate nobody. Whether you speak English, French and everything, we know this thing is working. We have the receipts and people on here. So we went out there and we fellowship with an orphanage of young children that's been through some of the most terrible things in their life that no one want to see anybody do it. One young lady had a burnt cut in her head where somebody did something vicious to her. But we went out there under the leadership of Abdul Malik and praying fast. We donated supplies. We had a wonderful day with the children. They brought so much 
joy to their eyes or they didn't even want us to leave and everything. This is the type of work that praying and fasting is doing all over the world to touch and change people's lives. But we not no exclusive praying, fasting, secret membership. We are taking the success that we found and we are spreading it all around the world. Salam alaikum, family. You 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 took us to a a restaurant slash club where some people from the United States expatriates had a uh, moved to move there. Can you explain? Tell them about that that ordeal that you took us to. Yes, we 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 met up with a, a, a amazing community of people that used to live in America and decided to get out of America and so-called move to paradise. And which is a blessing that they're able to do that. But the problem with that, no matter where you go around the world, is no such thing as paradise. The true paradise is in whipping yourself. Now, if you have bad habits of eating here that you started in America, drinking like you do in America, partying like you do in America, now you move to a place that you think you call it paradise, but with all that you bring with you is not paradise. It's actually a prison with you in, because the prison is within yourself. So when we met with these brothers and sisters and a lot of them was overweight, sick, diabetes, cancer, everything that you have over here, they was having over there. So when Abdul Malik went to them and explained to them that you might be in a place which you are blessed by God to be in, which appear to be paradise. But if you don't pray and fast and change your way, you only in a prison in a so-called paradise. And they were so well recepted from the message that Abdul Malik um, gave to them. And many of them to this day, I speak to them on a regular basis and they say, yo, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm feeling much better. So that's why I say we beg our families that live with us, come to success, come to what is good for you. So we are spreading that message around the world and the people in the Dominican Republic, the people that used to live in America living in now, they are receiving the blessings that we are receiving and it's helping them change their lives. Praise you know, and, and I just want to, I want to just, I want to horsey back on this, what he's saying, because most people, let me say this to everyone who's listening all out there in, on, on Facebook and Instagram, et cetera, particularly believers, don't come here. I'm gonna say this again, don't come here. Just take what we're giving you and do it where you stand. Love way from. Don't even come, don't come near me. Just take what the messenger gave you and use it. Pray and fast. It's obligatory. Because I don't want you to come here and use me as an excuse to fall out. He cursed. And you done been cursed out by so many Negroes over the last 50 years in your life. But he cursed. He said a bad word. And you cuss out your children like they ain't even family. I can speak into your life because I'm here in the hells of North America too. I know what it looked like. And you ain't no exception to the rules. So I'm just saying, take what this brother, this sister, and many of these people are giving you and use it in your own world. I'm not, I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for someone to save their life. And I don't need to know who did it. If Allah hits your heart and makes you want to tell me, Hey, man, I was influenced by what you've been doing. I want to thank you. Then that's on you. But I don't need the applause of men. I don't need that. I do this effortlessly. Am I perfect? Hell no. I ain't perfect. 
I couldn't talk to you if I was perfect because I wouldn't want to be around you. Imperfect. I used to tell people when I used to fish them in, I would say stuff like this. You ever broke the law before, brother? You, yeah. you come with me. The other one say, I ain't never broke no law. So you can't come around me. I don't need nobody around me. You ain't broke no law. Now go on over there with the rest of the people. Get on away from me, man. You ain't broke no law. I don't need nobody. And anybody out here broke a law. If you broke a law, come get the bins and the trucks and the hummers and the toys. Come on. If you ain't broke uh, no law, you stay over there with your good like stuff that. and the shit. I don't want nobody. Jesus didn't come for those who were not sick. He came for the sick. The minister came and got me. I was a lawbreaker. And he came to get me and millions of other brothers. I, I'm the same way as you. Just analytical and always opinionated. Ain't got no receipts showing that I'm a success story. But got some opinions about people. Talking about people. You got the gift of talking about people. That's your gift. Your gift is to talk. Can you show me one of the other gifts? If you're so good at this gift talking about people, do you have any gift that will make us hit the lotto for 400 million? Do you have a flip side to that gift where you can get us rich, get us reparation, get us something? Do you have any other gift other than, oh, them niggas, oh, that nigga, oh, he talked about the minister, oh, he talked about this, he talked about different laborers. Oh, he, do you have any other gift other than the gift of gossip? Slander and backbite. You got any other gift. If you got any other gift, please stand up. You you strip to your seat. I'm strip. You know, don't take yourself to your chair because you ain't got no other gift other than come up with this. And you don't even call the brother and say nothing to him. I don't even know you is, but I only say this to you to whip that devil in you because it ain't you. It's the devil in you, brother and Come sister. On. That's you right. good brother, you good sister. You ain't the person I'm talking to. I'm talking to that devil that gained mastery over you and caused you to forget the unification that Master Farah Muhammad desires of us today. That's the only person I'm talking to. So it ain't you getting mad at me. It's the devil in you. And it's my job being the servant to the king to whoop that devil's <laughs> give these brothers and sisters a warm round of applause sister Lisa okay you know we 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 short time now. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to say this right quick. We we've been sponsoring Ghana, Sister Lisa. I sent you those things to your Facebook. I need you to show because brother brother Abdul Latif Adam, who is the top fisher man of prayer and fasting, yes, he, he lives is. in Ghana, Africa. That's if right. you don't think he's the top fisherman in prayer and fasting, you got another thing coming. Please don't try him. I want to show you, we gave him, hold him right there. We, you can take it down since you got it. Just bring it right back up. I want to give them an illustration. This brother is the Ghana representative for prayer and fasting in Ghana. I wish you had some other stuff too. The ones when we gave the books and the, the, the ink and all of that, but don't worry about it. Let's go with current stuff. He has got prayer and fasting so popular in his village. His name is Abdul Latif Adam Abibaka. I'm gonna say it again. Abdul Latif Adam Abubaka. That's his name. But that's not his name no more in his village. You know what his new name is? Oh, what is it? Prayer and fasting. And fasting. 
<laughs> and fasted. That's what they call him. He walk up there and say, prayer and fasting. <laughs> Do you see? He said, no, Abdul Latif, out of Abu Bakr. They said, no. No. Prayer and fasting. Now walk by. This man here is the one of the greatest gifts to anybody. Because what you look for in a person to be straight up with you and make things happen when your absence, you ain't gonna find that. If you find that it was a gift from God. You're not going to find the guy to come do your work. You can get a general contractor to come over here and look at you and say, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> and you'd be looking for him after he didn't came and do a little work that day. You paid him half the money. Now you got to call. Oh, I had another job over here. Why would you take my job if you got two, three jobs that you juggling? You see, you'll make me make it so you can't do no job. You see what I'm saying? You bring, you bring the so-called American Negro out. But this brother here, this brother here, we give him, the, we, we send the money to him. He said, we're going get, to get the children. He going to the Islamic school, set the whole school on fire. And he videotapes them. And he makes them acknowledge where it came from. This came from prayer and fasting, the foundation to success. Abdul Malik Muhammad out of the United States. You better say it or don't get no gifts from me. And they get up and prayer and fast. He does it. He makes it happen. He does it. He gets an Eid feast. He said, man, Brother Saladin 7X say, brother, we, do y'all sacrifice a calf? You know, doing nothing. He said, yeah. So I sends him one where the India, uh, down in India, they were sacrificing the cow. They they got the cow on there. They cut the, cut the cow's throat. The cow jump up and break out running. They chasing the cow. I say, fall off, fall off. <laughs> so the brothers say, I said, oh, no. Then they tell, they put him down. They cut him some more. The, the calf get up, kick the band out the way and break out running again. I said, oh, no, this is bad, man. Allah, 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 I'm trying to come up out of this damn. This is why Brother Saladin 7X said, when we slaughter the, the fascist calf, it ain't no physical one, it's the one inside of me. That's the only one I'm going to slaughter, because if you get it running from me, I ain't cut his throat. I ain't going to have no more strength. Y'all going to have to pick me up off the ground. And I'm thinking, God did this to me. You know, so I talked to Abu, I, I talked to Adam Latif Adam, and so we sent money for everything over there with them, helping him out. And he distributes it to the whole community, to the Muslim community, to the outside. So I asked him, man, look, I ain't trying to give you no money. You go kill a cow, calf, and that, I mean, a cow, and that thing get up running. And he said, no, <laughs> brother. He said, they did it wrong. I said, what they do? They said they were supposed to tie his, 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 his legs together so he couldn't get up and run. And the blood would drain and we put in the name of Allah. He said this, I said, man, don't do this to me. I can't take no more of this nightmare on Elm Street in India. So he said, no brother. So he, we sent the money and all the stuff and he took the cow and fed the whole village those that many that he can. And he gave bags of rice, he did it all, and he videotaped it all. But this time, they the babies are dying for, because they, they drinking bad water over there. Cause it's like Accra, 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 Ghana, this, the, this, the, is that what it's called? Yeah, whatever, it's right there. But he's like nine hours outside of that and got sheaves in different villages. But this one is killing the children, the water is. And sometimes it's a Muslim school, they gotta go miles and miles just to do voodoo to take, make their prayer. 
Then they got to come all the way back, and they walk. They walk in in the in in the Serengeti. You know, there ain't no walk down the street like in your your neighborhood. You walking down the street? No, you walking in the jungle. You hear me? Cheetah, lion. You know the real thing. This ain't no real fake stuff. This is the real stuff. But what we did, we said, look, we got to get water. Same way the minister got the water for Haiti when they were, they had that earthquake and stuff went bad and he went over there and donated. We just following in the footsteps of our leader, teacher and guide, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We said, man, we can get a water system put in for you all so that you can actually uh, get some clean water for the for the school. So we 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 got that together and then I said I'm gonna put a flyer together. I'm gonna give you 5,000 flyers and I'm gonna send you the money, get the 5,000 flyers. So we got the we sent the money, got the 5,000 flyers. The day he got the money, they was do they was doing the 5,000. They got the they got two big banners. I want to show you what they did. This is the type of person you want on your team. I'm gonna show you what they did the moment they got the 5,000 flyers. Sister Lisa, come on with it. Show the people. This is, this is ticking, right? They just got the flyers yesterday. Uh, uh, This is the prayer and foundation uh, camp of Baba Dokuma community. This is to uh, show that the people are successful and doing their idol adha at this prayer. Please and everyone should uh, witness this in this uh, community as our Dokuma Idil Adha prayer. Uh, so this is the go ahead and we started. We want people to uh, observe well in order to uh, help us in this. The Dokuma uh, Water Community. Prayer come for our Islamic community. Prayer for and fasting. I'm give them. Mumra, Mumra. Badal, Mariana. Mariana, Zanmia. We need water uh, supply here. We want help from uh, people. Please, we are drinking bad water in this community, and we need water. Good clinical water. We need good water to drink in this country. The crowd. Okay. <laughs> Allah Akbar. 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 Allah
Beautiful. Oh, oh praise is due to Allah. Do you do you, do you have a picture of Abdul Latif? Yes, I do. I have to find it and pull it up. I will. I have it right here. I'll send it to you. Did you all just see what I just saw? Yes, sir. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful. Oh, praise I God. mean, I mean, I mean, is this man putting work in or what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This man is putting that work in. If you, if I ever seen it, I'm sending it to you now, Lisa. Do you want me to send it to you on on uh, WhatsApp? Do you want me to send it to you in Messenger? Messenger, please. Okay. I'm just brother uh, Abdul Latif Adam. Are you on? Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abdul Latif Adam. Yes, sir. Tell us what you have done. Yeah, inshallah. The community is very happy about praying and fasting for their hard work and they are doing. Even yesterday, I was meeting the elders of the community. They really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Praise be to God. What did you, when you were in the community, how many flyers did you give out, Brother Abdul Latif Adam? Yeah, we are able to distribute 3,400 flies yesterday in one oh, day it gets it gets to a point that and my friend said ablative let's go home we are tired i say what we are doing the work of god we are we must to continue to distribute the, the flies <laughs> Well, he sounded like somebody over here. That's right. He said, what? We're doing the work of God. Ain't no such thing as tiredness. Yes. Go ahead on, Brother and Abdul Latif. And we, are do, and we are doing the work to Mr. Abdul Malik and praying fasting. So we should continue to distribute the flyers. So yesterday, me and five my friends were tired. Mm. You see him? There he is. Abdul Latif Adam. Abu Bakr. AKA prayer and fasting. Beautiful picture. Oh, picture. They're so beautiful. This was the Id Mubarak uh, festival, Brother uh, Adam Latif. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We did it after prayers. After prayers. <laughs> now. Awesome. Do you know how much these brothers and sisters appreciate what we're doing for them? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much Allah is going to bless you all for this effort? Yes, sir. We're not just doing this we're doing this because this is what the messenger, the minister gave us an example of doing. We're just following his example. 
this is what we're doing. We're working this program and we're not sitting on our hands and we have to move fast because time dictates the agenda. You got to fight. You got to save your life. And in the process of saving your personal life, don't be selfish. Because every degree of knowledge that you get from the life-giving teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad should be shared with your brother on your left and your brother on the right. Whether you are 100% cured or not, you still want to start passing it out, just like them. So uh, play that video of the minister right quick, because I got to send my sons out. And then we're going to close out right after we show one more clip go ahead I have uh, several Susan. videos do you want the human nature one yes please thank you sister Lisa. you're doing such an excellent job we appreciate you all praises due to Allah. feeding the sheep is such a powerful principle he calls us sheep because human beings are easily led in the wrong direction. Hard to lead in the right. I read some words by Master Farad Muhammad to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that he wrote in a letter. And in the letter, he said, the human being is very strange. They go in schools like fish. And if you watch, watch a fish in a school, in a tank, you'll see a lead fish and the other fish in formation. And when the lead fish turns, all the other fish turn. That's why our enemies make sure to set up your leaders for you. Because they're wise to human nature. And they make sure that the leaders that they sanction for you are the leaders that they control. And they make sure that the leaders that come to you are the leaders that they have fed so they know what they're going to feed the sheep. And that's why you are sheep that don't have the Lord as your shepherd. If you did, you would not be in want. If the Lord were your shepherd, in fact, you would have been led into green pastures and by the still waters and your soul would have been restored. But Satan is your shepherd. He just comes in different forms. Satan has schools of theology too, brother. Satan makes ministers. God is not the only one making preachers, you know. Satan makes some too. <laughs> we got to look in the mirror and find out whose preachers are we. Wow. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's our minister. I'm sure Brother Dumai will have something to say on that. Yes, ma'am. All right ahead. Did you know that before you came to birth, you underwent three great trials? to determine whether you were fit to run the race of life? Look, all of us were once sperm. Was there anybody here that was not sperm at one time? No. Okay. So we all had a common beginning, right? Yes, sir. Very common. Now, yeah, very common. <laughs> and when dad emitted sperm into the vaginal tract of mom, how many sperm were in that, I guess you would call it that ejaculation. I ain't being vulgar. 
Was it one sperm, two sperms? Sometime it might have been one billion tiny microscopic sperm. So you were in a race before you got here because you were in competition with another hundred million, two billion other sperm all trying to reach the egg and fertilize the egg. Swimming. Check it out. And you, you were one in a hundred million, one in a billion, and you made it. Okay? The vaginal tract of the female is a hostile environment. Did you know that? That sperm got to swim and swim fast. Got to get to the egg. Otherwise, the acidic nature of the vaginal tract will kill me. So you had competition. You had a hostile environment. And you had to swim upstream against gravity to fertilize the egg. And you accomplished all three while you were just a tiny microscopic sperm. Now you're a big man. You're going to tell me that you did this when you were so small that we had to put you under a microscope to even see you? And now you complaining? You know what I mean? It's too many people. I, I can't make it. No, oh, no, 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 no. Your odds are not like they were. Then you won. How many is in this place? You can make it. Yes, sir. I'm going to kill myself. Don't talk like that. Yes, Ain't nothing that bad that you should take your life. You can always overcome. Look, the environment that you came through is hostile. This is a hostile environment. Swim. You can make it. Pull up against the pull of gravity. You can make it. You're down, but you don't have to stay down. You can get up. You are of God made in his image and after his likeness. Allah Allah You're on mute, Brother Abdul Malik. You're on mute. Allahu Akbar. Well, you know, we got eight minutes to go and we out of here. And I want to give you something before we go. Sister, uh, sister, sister, uh, Lisa AX. Hold yes, on sir. one second. You know, this is part two of mathematics is Islam. Raising the dead. Last week, last, well, to Thursday, it was all about problem book number 31 and 32, where the messenger asked us, How many people will you have to get every day? That's right, pull it up. What would be the daily average of accomplishment judging from weekly? I can't see it. Read it to me. Because I what can't see it. What would be the daily average of accomplishment judging from weekly converts? Charging from weekly converse. Now read the first first paragraph. Now read read the, no read from but the messenger on down. And this yes, is where sir. we went. 
but the messenger and his laborers do not agree with the old prophet in this modern time. Yeah. He thinks that he will remove all poison and rust from every one of the 17 million. At the same time, he desires for every one of you students to help solve this problem since you have learned the time, accomplishment, and old prophets number 144,000. Stop what right there. Read that again at the same time, right there. At the same time, he desires for every one of you students. Stop, stop. Every one of who? You students. If you're a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you just been commissioned. And you've been commissioned for a long time. And sometimes we fall asleep because there is a satanic reality that we live under and he kind of knocks us out of position. But I'm only showing you the mathematics of Islam. If Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam, then you should be able to prove this in no limit of time then you should take some of your mathematical theology and gain luxury, money, good homes, and friendship in all walks of life. But the first thing, you should be able to prove this in no limited time. It ain't taking me a long time to tell you, point out what the messenger is saying and show you your indictment. It's your indictment right now, believers. You've been indicted. At the same time, he desires for every one of you, male and female, students in the class of Islam under the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to help solve this problem since you have learned the time and what must be done accomplishment of the old prophet's number 144,000. That's all the old prophet said that, you know, a prophet don't just say what they want to say, right? You know, God said that to him, right? Right. So that's not, we trying to beat God's word, kind of like Abraham did. Remember, Abraham said, would you kill all of them, God? He said, fine, 50. He said, fine, 40. I can't. 30. 10. He said, fine, one. And Abraham was a friend of God. But he wanted to teach him something that I'm the all-knowing. Allah, I'm the knower. I don't care what you come up with. You're not better than me. but I'm going to guide you into what is necessary. Now, look, let's go with this. Hmm, I don't know what this is on here. Hold on. Okay. So every one of us as students, we trying to beat it. We ain't even made it to the 17 million. Uh, I mean, uh, we ain't made it to no 100, 144,000 yet. You know why we haven't? Because he asked at the, at, the, at the same time, he desires for every one of you students to help solve this problem. He goes on and said, what would be the daily, meaning that you should be fishing daily. Did you hear that? You should fish daily. When you walk out your house to go get gas, you see black folk walking up pumping gas, you should be saying something. You should have a flyer. You should have something that you put in their hand. Something that you should get a phone number. Because if you get the phone number, then you can continue the conversation and not mess with a person's daily routine that probably was just getting gas to get downtown and do this. You ain't trying to strike up a whole conversation. You're just trying to get some type of hook in their mouth because you a fisher woman and a fisher man. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. The messenger said, what would be the daily, daily average? How many are you going to get in a day? Did you just hear what the messenger said? 
to accomplish to a daily average of accomplishment judging from weekly converts. But you got to say how many, he said how many in one day? What is your daily one? What's your daily average, bro? What's your daily average on fish? How many you get today, Malik? Uh, I got 75 today. Damn. I got 22. I got 15. Damn. Okay. What you get the next day? I got 52. Damn. Okay. I got 15. I got three. Man, you better get your weight up. Three, you know them people ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get all them people, man. You're gonna get one out of three. See, this gotta be a real good game for us because this is our life's mission. And that's why we are gonna be retired from all of these obligations that takes us off of doing what the messenger asked us to do. And you just give us a moment and we'll show you better than we can tell you. So he said, what would be the daily average? How many are you gonna get in one day to accomplish of the accomplishment judging from weekly converts? Do you have to get 10, 20, 30, 40 by the end of the week to see how many gonna stick and stay? This is what the messenger is asking us. So this is last, this was, you wanna see this, just go back to last week. I mean, this past Thursday, and you'll see this, but we be on this, but I wanted you to see this. This ain't where we at yet. Let me see. And we're cutting time too. All right. Y'all all right? Everybody okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise you. Yes, sir. Praise Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. I'm asking you believers, because I'm really talking to y'all, because you know better. You've been around here too long ignoring that problem book. I'm asking you, do you understand what the messenger said? I, in no limited time, he said, you should be able to prove this. Did I just prove it to you based on his words? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So we yes, got sir. it. Now, I don't need, I want to, I want to duck this. I want to go to the, the Christian, the, I want to go to the Christian, uh, no, I want to go to the Christian. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I want to go there first. Yeah, then we'll go to what Akron put out. Do you see this right here? Y'all see it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Let's, let's go with uh, the Jesus on the cross. You see him right there? Yes, sir. Show you, I'm going to show you mathematically why we are not doing what the messenger instructed us to do. The, script, the, the, the Bible says, pick up your cross. When you don't pick up your cross, guess what God allows Satan to do? Hang you on your cross. Say that again. I'm going to say it again. Lord, my good teacher. If you don't pick up your cross and follow him, like many people across this country are doing, but not enough, you will be pent on your cross. You see Jesus right here? His hands is pent on his cross, so he can't put no work in. Are you putting any work in, Black woman and Black man? That you can look in the mirror and say, I'm about this life. I'm a baby Farrakhan. I ain't talking about you good talkers. Because that talking stuff is cheap. I ain't trying to hear none of that foolishness. Ain't nobody over here beat me at what I do. Fishing. The number one. They can't beat me. And if they can, I accept the challenge. They won't. And that's what you have to be. Don't ask nobody to go fish for nobody. You, if they do, you make sure you got higher numbers than them. Always give them something to chase. Or are your hands nailed to the cross because of your ineffectiveness? 
do you see the hands pent? If you ain't manifesting nothing with your hands, then they pent on the cross. You don't want to go out. The minister said, death is in the Mars. Life is in the street. The moment you feel like you can't go out and fish the peoples, you just set up death in your own temple, your own mind, your own church, your own mosque. So that's why your feet is pent to the cross. Believe me, the, what you're looking at on that picture is symbolic. See, signs and symbols is for the conscious mind. Get your conscious self up because right now you unconscious because you're still wearing that on your chest, your cross with your gold and diamonds in the Jesus. Get your mind right. He dead in the doorknob and don't even know it. But I know you'll know you're going to learn today. Do you see the crown of thorns on his head? The crown of thorns on his head represents the teachings that you got from this diabolical enemy of yours called European who gave you a public food school system that was a crown of thorns. What did it make out of you, all you good public school graduates? You a stripper, you a hoe, you a drug dealer, you a gang banger, you about this life, you the baddest bitch, I'm the baddest bitch, that's my bad, I'm a bad bitch. That's what your crown of thorns gave you? Go on Instagram. All you got is booties. And you got 5 million followers chasing your booty. You ain't said a word. I'm on Instagram. Booties for days. Little waistline and booties. Clapping booties. You act like the booties are giving you a sermon on a mount. As many followers you got were looking at them. They ain't said a word to you. What y'all doing? Sign language? And then just a few more days, that booty gonna dissipate and it'd be a new booty up. Because now this one ain't getting the likes in the in, in the hoorahs that they used to. And then you got millions of people following what? I killed six niggas this morning. Huh, huh. You got oh y'all, come on, man. What the hell is this? This man got a crown of thorns. He got it from the public school system. He got it from the white man's church. A crown of thorns. You big good politician. Do you see yourself pinned to the cross? Why you won't unify? Why y'all won't put your dollars together? Well, we got a little small group over here. We're putting our dollars together. When y'all gonna help us? We showing you the work we do. You send your tax monies over there to the to the white man, your lover, your friend, your rapist, your lyncher, your murderer of your children. You give your tax dollars to them. You give it to the white man's church. The one he gives a billion dollar face based initiative to. He give them all the money. And they never say nothing about the brothers getting killed in the hood. They never send the church out on a Sunday and go out there and march up the blocks and say, man, you ain't doing that no more. You never see it. You know why? Because in the contract of the magicians, the pharaohs, the, the, the spiritual systems of the white man, the devil, if you do it, we'll take the faith-based initiative away from you and you won't get no more money. We'll deal with the niggas killer. You just get in there and preach Jesus the way we trained you to. Get it? Good niggas go to heaven. Bad niggas go to hell. Teach something outside of that. We taking the money from you. And we're going to tell about your little pedophile uh, situations that you have going on that we hide from the outside of the public. As long as you keep up the good work, nigga, keep up that good work, good nigga, then we won't blow you up. We'll, we'll destroy you like we've destroyed many people before you. Got it? So now the 
pastor is pent on the cross. Do you see him? And all of you who are doing no work to help this leader, if you is doing work, don't be excited about that because that ain't nothing, bro. Don't you get excited. If you ain't blowing up like the world trade, doing big things, then stop saying I'm doing something. Maybe you are doing something. Well, don't mention it. Because if you're doing it, then all praises be to Allah. This message is not for you. This message is for all of us who have the desire to do it, but can't see that we pent on the cross that we're supposed to be carrying. This is it. This is the end. I had a lot more to say, but I don't be all alone and dragging people. May Allah continue to bless you. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum sir. Allah. 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 We want to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight. We appreciate you for giving us your attention. We want you to know we're here for you. Allah loves you and so do we. If you want to get your God game up, if you want to help get yourself in order, mathematically raise yourself from a dead degree by degree, send us your name and your phone number. Text it to 818-614-614. 1902. That's to me, Sister Majida. Again, you can text me your name and phone number to 818-614-1902. So we will keep you in the loop of what we have going on in prayer and fasting and give you inspirational text messages. Allah loves you and so do we. Come join the family. Get your God game up. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. Wa alaykum salam, ma'am. Wa alaykum salam, family. Iyaka no budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ek dena saruto musakin Al surat ta latina anno amta alayhim Where il magdubi alayhim Walla do Allah Allah